Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Outlanders where once again in our base and we are going to be taking care of this thing today. Now in our last episode we discovered this little thing, it hasn't grown much at all which is a great relief but we have had quite a few instances of someone trying to take it so we are going to uh, move it to a new location and hopefully construct something around it to keep it nice and safe and secure. Before we do that, I think I do need to do a little bit of work around the base. As you can see, I've done quite a bit of stuff around here. I've reorganized the way these chests work, and I've also put in hoppers, so that all, all the systems are now going. Well, all of these crop farms are going anyway. And I've built this little thing. I'm not entirely satisfied with the way it looks, but it sort of fits in with the green kind of style of my base, so it sort of fits. And of course, we've got ourselves concrete powder, and places for the villagers all these all these composters should work quite nicely which does mean it means a trip to the to the place where the villagers go which is in the nether i think and we should be able to we need to get ourselves 48 villagers which is quite a lot we're also going to need to make sure that they're all villager they're all the right type so we need the potato ones in the potato area the carrot ones in the carrot area I don't have a boat with me a the wheat ones in the wheat area and the beet run beet root ones in the beet root area so quite a lot of work so I'm going to cut here and go for a couple of hours making sure this all works and we'll be back soon now I've got my first villager all locked up I'm not entirely certain if this is going to work yet but the way I'm reading things is that the villager should link to his closest uh, workstation which is this one he's all locked up and locked into his trade so hopefully he locks up I'm gonna go get a nether villager and see if that works if it doesn't well I'm gonna have to rethink this entire plan well I've made a couple of mistakes I forgot to rate code a couple of clips but never fear we've got ourselves 48 different villages all of these are the carrot ones we've got ourselves the beetroot ones over here and if we continue around, we got ourselves the potato ones, and we got ourselves the wheat ones over here. So they're all synced up, they're all linked up, and hopefully they don't ever unsync, because Waffly actually, or Gamer I should say, actually helped me put them all in, and it took quite a while to make sure they were all in the right areas, so quite a lot of work done. I've also made myself an emerald chest up here, and as you can see we've got quite a lot of emeralds, so this is pile is going to consume sorry this pile is going to be get a lot bigger and eventually if and when we get a beacon we're going to power it using emeralds and not iron but that's just an update of what i've been going on in this part of the base what we really need to attend to is the problem of this crystal thing over here now obviously in our last episode we discovered it and it's still nicely contained in its well, containment chamber we've got ourselves quite a bit of spice things to do with it we need to firstly take it to somewhere where it's not going to get uh, stolen again i reckon so what we should do first is find a good location to send it to and then we can do a little bit of do a little bit of experiments to see if we can send it there without having to lug it in our inventory or something or some use it lug it over a barge or something because we're still not certain what it is about it's just something mysterious as Mira said last episode so I reckon if I don't crash into my own base or in the water that I should fly off in this direction and hopefully we can find a nice place for this I'm thinking of a nice big plains field possibly a birch area but I'm not entirely certain a nice big hopefully flat area in which we can build this nice big base and I reckon somewhere over here in the sunflower forest or sunflower field should do quite nicely. It's next to a it's next to a desert, it's next to a forest, so we should be able to get plenty of wood and plenty of other resources that we need. So let's just mark down this this and head back to the main base to get the resources we need. I actually had to change the place where we are building this huge new building because the place I originally selected was quite close to another person's base and I don't think I'd want this too close to their base or anyone's base to be fair because we need this thing to be far far away so let's see we first want to smelt some stone and some cobblestone so let's get ourselves that into the furnaces there and there and 
there and there that should work perfectly and secondly we need to start digging up a nice big area so what we should do first is build the road build the road into it where's my shovel there it is and for this I probably shouldn't have built put this in the middle of the road should I so something like here I reckon and then we'll go with a 10 wide I reckon no let's go with 8 wide 1 2 3 4 Four, five, six, seven, eight. I think that's eight wide. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight wide there. Then we're going to use our mounds of gray, gray concrete and stick it all in here. And let's have a look at that. That's reasonably wide. I think another two, one on each end should do perfectly. Or two on, e on one end. There we go. Ah, that's a lot better. Okay, so let's get this bit done. We're going to go for quite a long road, so we might need a little bit more concrete powder. And with that part of the road done, I reckon having a, the smooth stone slab here is going to work. Now one thing I did just remember is that if I want a dividing line down the middle, I probably should make this an 11 wide or an even, on uneven number, I should say, an odd number. So if we put this down, put in another line of this concrete powder. Let's get that done like so and then if we take out some of the middle line that should work perfectly now for the dividing line color i'm thinking yellow would be best just because it contrasts well with the dark gray so i did see some dandelions over here somewhere there we go one two three in fact let's just get them all we're going to need more yellow later anyway so let's get them there and head back to our little structure over here and get ourselves the stuff that we need and as night falls, I just realized I forgot a bed. Thankfully, this is a place where we can spawn stuff. So if I just start killing off some animals, we should be able to get ourselves some wool. I finally decided to go with a lazy route and get the bed from over there. And now, of course, there are sheep over here. So that, that was a little bit silly. It's been a little bit of time since the last clip I recorded. And in that time, I've been trying to figure out exactly how to build this thing. It's not exactly the easiest thing to build, but I think I've got an idea. So what we need is smooth stone, which we spent a bit of time fixing up. What we want to have is some kind of massive door here. And I'm thinking smooth stone. So if I go, and I do want it sort of going in and out. So if I go three there, three there, that's not three. Uh, let's see, so that needs to go one, two, three, one, two, three, and there and so on and so forth. And then that gives us four on the mid, three, four in the middle, which should be okay. And if I actually take out the middle two, that should be enough of a door to get in and out of. So what I'll do here, build this up and then I need to, to figure out how I'm gonna do the outside frame, probably something like that, the way I'm gesturing. Now for the frame around it, I'm thinking we should have this block here, a block forward. Then there'll be a bit of extra bit here. I'm not, it won't be the same color as this, but perhaps some kind of concrete, maybe dark, a dark concrete. And then one, two, three, and then I think like that should do. So if I bring this up and then from here, this one should curve round and the same over here. So it'll go straight up and then a curve and straight down on this side as well. So let's get started on that. And we've got a little bit more progress going on here. We've got ourselves the side wings, I suppose you can call them. I'm kind of thinking I might need to put a mirror or glass in here of some sort. So that's why I've gone with a four wide design. Now what we've got to do here is figure out how we're gonna get the curve from around here-ish up and over. Because this one isn't the best looking curve in the world. And I don't think, I think I might need to replace bits here and there. But it starts with going up here so if we get up here we should be able to figure out a little bit more where we're going to go and having a look at that this isn't too looking too bad i think this could work for us although these corners aren't the best i might need to get rid of that block here and that block there but overall i think it's working pretty well and having a look at that there's just one more thing i think needs to be done and that is put in some slabs or some staircases in each of these corners so they should be made out of dark wood because that's the closest I've got to that. So do I have enough is the question. 
And how many am I going to need? I'm going to need 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Hmm, I might as well just make all of these into, into here because I think I'll need them all. And then we'll see if I miscalculated. And with those bits in, I think I did massively, massively miscalculate. I've still got a whole stack of these slabs, or these stairs, I should say. So we're going to have to find a use for them somewhere. But overall, I'm actually pretty happy with the way this looks. These corners aren't quite right, but that's a reasonable face for the start. And it doesn't look very sciencey or bunkery or something like that, which is the look I was looking for. But we'll see how we go with the rest of the build. Another thing we need to work out is exactly how big we want this big box to be. So we've got ourselves, what, a quite a reasonably large front face. So we do need this thing to be rather deep and rather big, which does mean covering up this ravine over here. But I guess that's, a, that's the disadvantage of progress on this server. So if we come out a fair bit, that's pretty long, but it's pretty thin as well. So that should... Something like that should do, and then I want to figure out how big I want these panels to be, which is also going to dictate how much how much of this dark wood I'm going to need. So, in order to do that, let's finish off this cube, this square, and go from there. Now that I've got these support beams in, or these, these framings in, I should say, I should get into support beams. I kind of messed up that sentence, but I should get into support beams. I do want to follow this path over here, multiply by the one, two, three, four, five other bits that I need to fill in. So it shouldn't take too long to fill these in. And then we're going to have a pretty close, pretty close thing to what we actually want to have in this building. And we've now got the frame of this building in. It looks pretty good, actually. I'm, I'm pretty happy with the way it looks. So what I really should do now is figure out how I'm going to get a roof on here, not drop down into a into a ravine and how, figure out how to get the roof on there as well as a few other bits and bots. So firstly, let's get out of this ravine and then get started on that. Now, one of the thoughts I had was that since this is such a big building, the rafters up here wouldn't normally be dusted or anything. So if I put a couple of cobwebs up there, I think it'll give it a little bit more of a lived in aesthetic, which I'm going for. Now, thankfully I've got a, not one, but two abandoned villages. You can see one just over here. And so that's an ample place to get some cobwebs. And the other one is an acacia village, which I think I raided my bed from earlier this episode. So if we get up these cobwebs like so, we should have enough to put in and make the building look a little bit more old. This village is turning out to be a good mine of other things as well. There's lots of banners, there's a fire which I put myself into, and there's quite a few other things in here, like, like where is it? like a bell and a and hay bale. So all of those things are going to be quite useful for uh, for other projects back home. Now, we've only got a stack of cobwebs because that's all my inventory could hold with all the other junk I had to collect. So let's be very, very cautious with how we do this. Now, I'm not entirely sure how I want to do the roofing yet. But what I'm thinking is some kind of overlay on top of these rafters. So it looks like the rafters are holding up the the roof so which means this level here and wherever the rafters is is the second lowest the lowest level I can have stuff or the highest level I should say so just a couple of cobwebs here and there should suffice something like there I do want to get it behind this log but to do that I'm going to need to pillar out carefully so something like there as well should do quite nicely so if we keep doing this, we should be able to get ourselves quite a nice looking building, or at least an older style building, which is what we're going for. And looking at that, I think that's reasonably okay. So we still would want to put a few more cobwebs here and there, especially in the in-between bits. But I think we've done a reasonable job. Now we should probably work out how we're going to do this roof. And I thought I'm gonna make use of all the acacia wood around me and make this all into slabs or into acacia wood stairs. So let's get ourselves a fair bit of acacia slabs and it's probably not going to be enough. So let's get some more. There we go. There we go. And hopefully we've got enough wood because I don't want to have to go chopping more down like that. And there we go. So 
How do we want to do this? We should probably get up there first. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the entire point of this roof was so the so these beams over here are supporting the roof or ceiling or whatever you call it. So if I do something like this and see how that looks, uh, except I made a mistake here, but something like this all the way across. And if we extend it to the next one, we'll see how it goes. But I think this isn't the best idea on how to do this. We'll have to see. With looking at that from the bottom, I think that looks pretty good. The contrast of the red isn't probably as good as it should be with the rest of the building, but I think that's going to work pretty well. So now what we have to do is cover this entire thing with the acacia slabs and then work out how we're going to light up this thing in the inside. I've got a few ideas on that, which I'll get to when I have finished the roof. And with that, the roof is now done. I've gone with a two wide overhang over here and a four wide overhang on this side, on the pointed part of the roof. Now, I've also decided to put in a few, I suppose, quote unquote, mistakes in this to make it look a little bit weathered and beaten and worn away slightly. I don't want to put too many on because it does need to still look in use kind of thing. But it's it's just generally makes it look a little bit better, better rather than the full neat bits that we usually get. So we just need to pop down under here and I probably should have started on lighting this bit up first. There's been a number of times when I've had to get in here to fix things up. Good, the creeper didn't blow up. And so yeah, I probably should work on the lighting now. Now the main thought I had was to have chains hanging from the ceiling and the lanterns from hanging from that. So that should work and I'm going to need rather long chains to fix this up. However, firstly, I'm going to put in a lot of torches to try and mob proof this thing because I do not want stuff spawning while I'm trying, still trying to work this building. And you might also note that in off camera, I've also put in a nice grass floor, one below the bits where these pillars go. And that's mainly to give myself a bit of a base to put in something. I was thinking concrete or concrete powder, which both of which are falling blocks, or at least the concrete powder is. So I can then put it on all the concrete powder and make it all wet here in this bit if I wanted to. Now, for the lights themselves, I'm think, trying to figure out how many I need. I do want it to come down from these beams, which probably means four, I think, would be about appropriate. So if we come up here and put ourselves up and bring some chains down from the ceiling that should help give us an idea of where we want to go so we definitely want one here and then here maybe and that means i need quite a number of chains so we also need to figure out how deep we're going to go or how low we're going to go so if i bring take out this a little bit more and come down we'll need to hang a lantern from it Maybe I should stop shifting. No, that's not the way. So I need to, there we go. That's a little bit harder than I thought it would be, but it should be okay. And the same on this side, like so. This isn't as easy as it looks, is it? But we should have a general idea of where we're going from here. And as night falls, it's pretty obvious that these lights aren't going to be enough. I'm gonna to have to do a little bit more to figure it out. Now, if I do that, it's no better because you can you can't really see it down there so that's not going to work i really need to work out how and why and you know how i'm going to do these lights it's going to be really important because if i bring this down a couple more one two and then hang a lantern from it like so that does light it up a bit but this is going to be a monster fest if that's the only lighting we've got with full night now falling, you can see exactly how much light these two bring. This one obviously does a little bit more, but everywhere here is a spawning spot for the mon for monsters, so that is not good at all. What I'm thinking at the moment now is that these lanterns are just merely decorative. They, of course, will give off some light, but I don't think they're going to be enough. So what I'll do is I'll cover this in some kind of carpet or something, or I'll build it in such a way that there are hidden light sources. So... Let's get rid of these lanterns, hang that one back at the right height, 
get on with the rest and then we should be able to finish off by we should be able to finish off this episode soon as well and as night falls again we've got ourselves the chains and all the lights in it took quite a while to build actually but i think we've just about got what we can do for today now next episode we've got quite a bit more to do we've got to get ourselves the floor we've got to get ourselves the crystal over here we've got to get ourselves quite a bit more equipment over here to monitor that thing because who knows what it is what it is and what it could do and all that sort of thing and of course we need to make sure Lobo doesn't actually spot this and try and take it again but that is all I've got our time for today and it really didn't take long to record all this so thank you very much for watching this and don't forget to like and subscribe and share with all your friends and I'll see you in the next one goodbye